Hey guys, it's Alex. I realized in my other videos I never actually introduced myself, so my name's Alex. Um, yeah, so today's video is going to be about um, the stages of buying your first horse or thinking about buying your horse and what you have to do before then. If I'm looking over here, it's because I have notes written on my laptop, so I apologize, but yeah. biggest thing that people underestimate is can you afford the horse and like okay you have to understand that the money that you pay for the horse itself is nothing compared to what you're going to be paying for it for the rest of its life or the time you own it because it is insane how much money you don't realize you're going to spend. <laughs> um, like, you could buy a horse that's even $500 or literally free, because the horse range goes from free to millions. Like, it's just insane how big a range there is. So, even if you buy a $15,000 horse, that is nothing compared to what you're going to be paying over the course of its life. So, um, I'd like to point out that this video is kind of for people that don't have a place to keep their own horse, like on their own property, so this still might help you, but probably not as much. Um, so can you afford it? First of all, can you afford the horse? And have money left over like right away, like you need a lot of money just at the beginning especially, because you need to pay for the horse, and then all its tack and what you need to work with it, and move it along, and so on. Um, so yeah, so, um, the biggest consistent fees you'll be paying are board, which can range from like $200 for outdoor board to, I've seen $800, but the, usually it's like $450, $500 for indoor board, so that means they keep your horse inside at night, and then your horse is outside all day. Um, yeah, so... The mid-range is about 350. 350 for outdoor board is usual for places. 200 would mean a place that doesn't have like an indoor arena or whatever. Like that's needed for um, the winter if you live in a cold place, like I do in Canada. But um, yeah, if you live in a cold place, you need the arena to work with it in the winter because it's gonna be too cold. So. 200 is kind of lowballing it, for sure. Um, yeah, so you can expect the board every month um, consistently, and then there's farrier, which is every six weeks, and well, six to eight weeks, six weeks, and um, that can be like $35 on the average range, so. That's not too bad <laughs> in the grand scheme of things. And then there's vet bills. Like, you could have to expect to get their shots done once a year. Uh, I think I paid like 150 for the shots I got, but I didn't get a lot of shots because I just didn't feel like he needed it, he needed it where he was, so I only got a few of them. And I can tell you what they are if you really care later. And teeth floating. Yeah, so the teeth. I think I paid two or two fifty to him for him to get his teeth floated. So they just file down their teeth, and you're supposed to do that every year to keep them healthy, and so that um, the bit doesn't irritate their mouth. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, yeah, and in board, like generally, like if you want them to feed your horse grain, that costs more for the weather. It's like one or two times a day. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, I don't give my horse grain right now because he's on the grass. I probably will in the winter, and in the summer I don't feel like he needs it. The other stuff I will talk about with tack, like what you actually need. Um, there's a long list, but it's not as much as you would think because I totally bought more things than I needed for like 
the first month of owning him, I haven't even used, or I've owned him for a lot longer than that, but the first month of using him, I had all this stuff that I really didn't need right away, so I kind of just went crazy. Um, obviously you need like your basic brushes and your hoof pick and all that stuff, and um, depending on the season you get him in, I got him in spring. I got my horse in spring, so um, I didn't really need to get like winter coats and stuff, but if you're getting them in the winter, you're going to have to buy a winter coat right away for them to have, which is like 150 to 250 bucks, so it's kind of a lot. Um, yeah, also you obviously need a saddle and saddle pads, whether you're English or Western. I always say that um, for your first horse, it's best to get something used, because you can get a higher quality something. I kind of made that mistake because I bought um, a high-end synthetic saddle, a uh, western saddle, for um, a cheaper price because it was like on a crazy sale and I've had to sell it because it doesn't fit him and you need to really fit your horse to your saddle. Like, you can't just wing it. Um, the saddle I bought was way too long on his back because his back is really short. Um, so now I can show you guys in a video, but um, I have a Billy Cook saddle and it's 27 years old and it's amazing. I absolutely love it and I highly recommend getting a Billy Cook if you see one. For Western people, I'm not really up to date on English saddles, but same thing. English saddles, obviously if you get something used that's in good condition, you're going to pay less than you are for something brand new. And also, like, going by Billy Cook, that saddle brand, um, saddles 30 years ago were made a lot better than they are now, so, um, yeah, my saddle's 27 years old, so it's been commercialized since then, and all the saddles have, um, gone up in price and down in quality, so you're not getting as great a saddle as if you got an older one. So that's another thing to consider. It might not look as shiny and pretty, but it's going to be a better saddle and it's going to last you a long time. Then you're going to need things like treats and um, lead ropes and halters. Um, yeah, all the basics. <laughs> um, any other like special blankets other than like a winter blanket can generally wait. Um, if you get them in like the middle of summer when the flies are really bad, you should probably get a fly mask. They aren't too expensive. And, um, yeah, first aid kit. I'll make a video about a first aid kit later. But, um, yeah, you should have a first aid kit with just, like, general things in case your horse gets injured. Um, yeah, or for treating wounds or whatever. I think of any other tack, I will add it in. But, I think that's it. So, this is gonna be a really, a really long video. When you decide that you can afford all this and everything is going to be okay and you want to buy your first horse, looking for a horse is harder than you think because you just want to buy like all of the horses that you see, or at least I did anyway, because you fall in love with the pictures or whatever, but then you go out and see them and it's not what you thought. People are a little um, sketchy, so you should really have a list of questions prepared to um, ask the seller um, about about that horse and just like you can tr sometimes tell if they're lying or not so just like be aware of that um, yeah there's a lot of sketchy people in the horse world who um, are trying to make a lot more money off their horse than their horse is worth and they won't budge on the price and sometimes you have to let that horse go and yeah I hate to say it but it's true um, for me anyway, I can tell my horse things were lied about. Um, I only actually went to see one other horse before I bought Wally. So I saw one horse, she was way too small, but um, she had horrible confirmation and um, yeah, she didn't tell me that and I drove like three hours to go and see her and um, yeah, she wasn't as well trained as she said. 
her health wasn't very good. She was extremely skinny. She just was trying to get rid of her because she decided she couldn't afford her anymore and she was like completely stuck. It was a little bit cheaper for me to buy a horse because I was looking for something that was just broke, walk, trot, and canter. Um, that's actually technically not what I got. I don't know. He was broke, walk, trot, and canter, but completely not well. Um, so he's five years old and he's only been broke since he was four. So it, um, he's still a baby, like he's not as advanced as most five-year-olds would be, so he's just got a baby brain, um, which is fine. So the first horse I went and saw wasn't, wasn't what I wanted. And um, even when I showed up to see Wally, she said he was gonna be 15 hands, and I believed her. He didn't really look 15 hands, but I took her word for it. Um, I measured him last week, and he's like 14, two and a half. So I was a little disappointed with that, just because if you know, like for, the world between 14-2 and 15 is like a huge difference when riding a horse. My horse was just a pasture pet for a long time, and um, when she got him, she broke him, but as soon as I got him, okay, I rode him when he was at the place where I was going to view him, he was great like not obviously he wasn't perfect he was a baby and he was bad with steering and he like he was he was okay but as soon as I brought him to where I was going he forgot everything I had to completely start him over and which is why he's not as far along as I would like him to be at this moment I thought in the first week I'd be riding him it would be great and I didn't get on him until a month after I owned him just because his ground manners were absolutely horrible and they still aren't very great but they're a lot better than they were um, I wish you guys could see because it was absolutely the worst thing ever like he would just walk right through you and not even know he did and um, yeah and just like desensitizing him to everything she said he was fine with ATVs and tractors and this and that and she takes him on the road yeah no he spooks at a, like a tarp or he spooks at absolutely everything. So just like little things like that, I'm not sure if she lied about or if he was just like nervous about the new place. Anyway, it doesn't matter because he's a great horse and he's doing really well. It's just kind of like throw the saddle on and go. Not like spend time with him and like get him to trust you, which is like the biggest thing I want to focus on because I really want to have a bond with him. I want him to run up to me in the field that hasn't happened yet, but I want that to happen, and I want him, like, he follows me around the arena all the time, and I want him to do that because he wants to, not because I'm leading him. I want him to actually want to be with me. So once you decide you want that horse that you've found, um, you have to, or not, you don't have to, but I recommend getting a vet check, and um, especially getting um, a very qualified vet. Because the horse, or because Wally was an hour away from me, I didn't want to pay a vet local to me that I knew about to travel out there because it would have cost me a lot more. So I decided to take the cheaper route and find a vet close to her. And um, I kind of regret that. She seemed like a good vet and I, I thought she was okay, but as soon as I got, got him, I found out so many things she said like were totally not true. Um, things like um, getting his teeth floated. I'm like, do you think he needs his teeth floated? When was the last time they've been done? He's like, oh, sh no, they shouldn't be, they shouldn't need to be done for like a year or so. so. I'm like, oh, okay, that's great. And as soon as I got him, he was like grinding on the bit. He was in so much pain. His teeth were so long. They hadn't been done in at least two or three years. Sorry, that's my phone. Um, yeah, they hadn't been done in at least two or three years. So. Yeah, I got them done right away as soon as I found that out, but things like that, like I didn't expect that cost to have to happen right away, so that was a little um, frustrating. And what else? Oh, his feet. Um, so I didn't know this. The vet was looking at his feet for absolutely forever, like let me get that through you. Like he was just, she was just staring at his feet looking at his legs, lifting them up like 10 times each one, and when I got him, 
he had the most severe thrush I think I have ever seen in my life and I like I didn't really know what to look for at the time but now I do and what I saw was absolutely like, disgusting so basically if you don't know what thrush is it's um fungus that like eats away their frog and completely like deteriorates it um, usually you can just like use like thrush buster or something like that and just like kill the fungus because it's just on top but um, his was so deep that it was like all the way in his foot and he almost had no frog left so we had to take these big blue bags and a solution called um, clean tracks and soak his feet for I think an hour which was really bad because he's such a little jerk and kept getting the bags off and wasting the solution and it was a complete nightmare because he was just terrified of them. Uh, not terrified, like I worked really hard getting him used to like the plastic bag noises and stuff, but like just something like that. It was so, not that I didn't know what to look for, but as soon as someone else picked up their feet that knew that, what they were talking about, they're just like, oh my god, he was like the worst thrush I've ever seen. I'm like, really? I thought I got like a reputable vet, and she had no idea that he had that. So I was a little disappointed. I'd like to find a vet and then stick with them, and they know what's going on with my horse all the time, and they can recognize them, and so on. And same with farrier. I haven't found a farrier I like yet. I started with a podiatrist, like a barefoot trimmer, but more or something and that was a frustrating experience so I decided to just go with barrier um yeah trailering <laughs> I didn't have a trailer so it's good to like try and make a deal with the person that's selling the horse usually they will have a trailer and you can just say oh is trailering included in the price and generally it is I think I've got everything sorry this was so long <laughs> If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I will try and get back to you. Well, of course I'll get back to you. Um, yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped a little bit. It was a little bit rambly and a little bit disorganized and I apologize for that. YouTube is still very, very new to me. Um, yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. Bye! Thank <laughs> you.